Do you think you're well cornered behind the wall? Do you think you're well cornered behind the wall there? Find me another place. At the same place but not cornered behind the wall. Hurry up and find something better organized than this. Hurry up. Change the place, change the place. Start thinking. We're starting to make ourselves useful to the group. Hurry up and answer. They are the elite of the French army, the special forces, highly trained men assigned with the most difficult missions, top secret missions that the media never hear about, fighting drug traffickers, hostage liberation. They are at the heart of the French troops commitment to the fight against ISIS and terrorist groups in the Sahel or Iraq. Among them are the Marine Commandos, 700 hand-picked soldiers, an exceptional unit of the French Navy. To join the team, a ruthless selection process awaits the candidates. Let's go. Come on, and that way, there'll be no more water afterwards. We got special permission to film them. The weapon is what will save your life. The fighter's goal is to use his weapon. It's not his ballpoint pen. We followed these young recruits for three months. Come on. They will need to be in top physical condition. A stamina that'll stand up to anything. You know how a fish feels when it's out of air, it's the same. And a steely determination. I told you we were going to suffer, guys. Only a few will make it to the end. We're tougher than Colanta. Immersion into the ruthless selection of the Marine Commandos. It's a military base located somewhere on the Breton coast. This is where one of the toughest selection courses of the French army takes place. Attention. This is the special forces of the French Navy. The hostilities begin. We're going to start with the good stuff. There are rules here. If you don't respect the schedule, we'll look after you. It's the first day of selection. A total of 88 people, from all the Navy's units across France, came to try their luck. We all hate cheaters and liars, here in the course. If we catch you, you'll be collectively punished. And we have plenty of games. The non-commissioned officer who gives them the briefing sets the tone right from their arrival. In the French Navy, he is what is called a chief petty officer. If you've come here, it's because you're looking for something, I think. Okay, the Green Beret, you have to earn it. And to get the famous Green Beret, the selection process will be ruthless. It will last three months. We will evaluate you physically and mentally, right away. We will know whether you're going to finish or not. If you take the tests hastily, you surely won't pass. You will have to push yourselves hard. A hard-hitting speech. When you're on a course, when you arrive, you normally can't talk. The steps are the same. When you arrive, puke your guts out. And an inspection, from every angle. Is the pressure already too much? 
In the front row, a young candidate wavers. Come on, it's stress time. Didn't he have breakfast? Lift your head up, stand up straight. For him, it was a very bad start. Luckily, when our seniors arrived, they didn't pass out right away, otherwise, we would be in trouble today. And choosing to become a Marine commando is also about certain values that I hope you have. It's to defend the country, the family, and there will be plenty of work for you guys I'm telling you, there's no shortage of that we won't be out of work here. The majority of candidates have just entered adulthood. Attention. They are on average 20 years old. Left. Column on the right, light jog, let's go. We've already lost one. That's a good start. What's your name? So, Kiki, did you have breakfast this morning? Yes, Master Chief. Hurry up. Lift your head and pull yourself together, because if you start like this, you won't likely get very far. Come on, get back with your colleagues. Well, that's promising. These young mariners, these beginner fighters, will be evaluated by the master chief, who will keep only the best. After 20 years in the special forces, he has seen the most dangerous enemy lines. To prepare these young recruits for the most perilous war zones, he won't let anything slide. Why don't you have your 620? This young mariner forgot his 620.4 form, a medical fitness form. You'll go back to Brest. No 620.4, no commando training. Since we're not too stupid, we'll see about getting it sent. If it's in your medical file, all right, position here, give me 40, next time, you won't forget. When you don't have a brain, you use your arms and it warms you up. For a forgotten form, the punishment is immediate, 40 push-ups. Guys, raise your heads, some of you look like you're heading to the slaughterhouse, if it starts like this, it's going to be a bad start. The same goes for latecomers. The message is clear, no misconduct will be tolerated. If during the tests, you do sloppy push-ups like this, I hope it's because you're exhausted. If you do push-ups like that during the tests, you'll go back where you came from. That's not a push-up. I remind you that all movements during commando training are done running. And that's just a taste of what awaits these young soldiers. You'll start marching after the evaluations. And it will be while singing. They are now entering the tough part. The first stage, two days of evaluation, during which they will have to perform a series of non-stop strength and stamina tests under the scrutiny of the selectors. A merciless stage. At the end of these two days, only the strongest will continue. Half of them will be eliminated. A few minutes later, camouflaged and in combat gear, all set in the back the candidates are now just numbers sit-ups pull-ups and push-ups from the very first trials some begin to falter on the carrying race if a candidate drops his comrade, he is automatically eliminated. You set your comrade down, you don't throw him. We suffer in silence. For number 42, it's over. A fall, so, a fall means failure, it's normal. Overall, it's fine, then there are two three guys we saw who struggled a bit with pull-ups, so generally, when you struggle with pull-ups in the final, it's not a good sign. 
for the rest. It means the guy is already at his limit. And this is just a small preview of what candidates will endure for weeks. They know it's the necessary step to achieve their dream of joining the elite unit of the Marine Commandos. The best job in the world, according to number 39, nicknamed Bourville by the Chief Petty Officer. He is 26 years old, a mechanic in the Navy for eight years, and now he wants to go into combat. When you're a bit younger, it's the elite of the elite. It's true. It's still one of the most beautiful jobs, for me. It's one of the most beautiful, most respected jobs. There's a certain pride too. This is the third time he has attempted the selection after two dropouts due to injury. For number 35, nicknamed Peepo, it's his first attempt, a tough 21-year-old trying his luck after just six months in the army. It's one of the stages known as one of the toughest in the world. It's difficult to get in, and I was desperate to be a part of this exclusive circle at all costs. To prepare, they all underwent intensive physical training. And yet, when these tests come one after the other without a break, it becomes an ordeal for them too. Like now, during the ropes test, climbing a five meter rope, they've all done it before. With this exercise adds a challenging weight, a 12 kilo bag. And the weather makes it even tougher. The ropes are slippery because of the rain. No, that's not good. Get up. The trainees have to complete two climbs as quickly as possible. Most of them fail. Stop swearing. A few, on the contrary, will get out of it. In a surprising way. And in particular, Bourville, number 39. Except, in reality, he used a little trick that won't go down well with the instructors. They spotted suspicious black marks on the rope after his turn. Resin, brought by one of the candidates. Bourville coated his hands with it to avoid slipping. For the instructors, he cheated. Resin man, join your colleagues. Just like this other candidate, number 73. An episode that will earn him the nickname Resin Man. Okay, so now it's a fault and a penalty, obviously, our two friends of Resin Man, step out of the line. Stand over there. Here and there. Okay guys, so, the resin is strictly prohibited. It's a cheating. So that's forbidden. Is that clear? So, gentlemen, thanks to your two colleagues. Go and rinse off, in the tub. Let's go, one by one. You can thank your colleagues, all right, get completely wet. All right. The chief pity officer had warned, here, all penalties are collective. There. That's called cohesion. This is cohesion. It's in difficulty that cohesion will be created. When it's easy, it's easy. The fact that, from time to time, you put them in the float tank, because they don't get loose, because a fault is a penalty. Sometimes, we see a bit of people's character and their ability to bear precisely this kind of ordeal. Okay, so now all in chorus you thank your two colleagues. A chorus of thanks. End of the first day. And we'll need to regain our strength. Because the next day will be even harder. Many will fall. It's a bit scary because this is my first experience. 
at least at the commando stage. So when we see the instructors arrive, there's always pressure. Will we really succeed? There's competition. A lot of people have trained. It wasn't easy. The ropes were slippery, but we managed to get through anyway. Faced with the difficulty of the upcoming challenges, half of the candidates will go home. The next morning, summons at 7.30 sharp for an inspection of the troops and the weighing of backpacks. It must weigh 12 kilos and not a gram less. This time, there's no way to cheat. Take a handful of gravel in your pockets. The candidates will not be allowed to take off their backpacks all morning, especially for the so-called walking test. But not a walk as we imagine. It's more like racing, which will follow one another for miles and miles. Barely time to quench the thirst. Here we go again. Still with the infamous 12 kilos on their backs and the weapon around their neck. The suffering begins to be red on their faces. When exhausted, a dozen give up or fail to finish. Until the end, guys, even if we're tired, even if we're in pain, we will keep our heads up and our chests out. When you're in pain, it means you're alive, you're number. 44 Master Chief. 44, go get in line and hydrate yourself. Well, it's a bit of a slaughter there, but that's normal. In large groups, there's always some loss along the way. It's better to keep the best ones who may go all the way. Is there anyone for whom it's over? It's going to be complicated for them. They're not on time. Let's continue the festivities. Because it's not over, obviously. It's not over, to say the least that we can say, because there's still one test left, the last of these two days of evaluation, a specialty of the Marine Commandos. Everyone fears it. It's the tank. Fifty meters wide, six meters deep. And water at eight degrees. The candidates must do a full lap of the tank, then dive four meters deep. A lovely lagoon, the most beautiful lagoon in France. In Marine Commando, there's Marine, so if the guy isn't aquatic, maybe he need to change specialty or army. Maybe he's not cut out to be in the Navy. Impossible for a Marine Commando candidate not to pass this test. Do you know what a fish feels when it lacks air? It's the same. For some divers, diving into water at less than 10 degrees after a day and a half of intensive effort, wearing wetsuits and a pair of waders is a challenge beyond endurance. Number 34, this is your last chance. Stop overthinking. Take the brain out of it. If you don't have much, it will be easier. He won't make it. 
he's automatically eliminated. Attention everyone, under the orders of the duty student, and I remind you, everything is done in a short strides, let's go. Active recovery. End of the first two days of evaluation. Okay. The fate of the candidates will now be decided in this office. Especially the first ones who are really limited, so tough luck for them. They'll come back and train. No leniency from the instructors. Candidates who didn't achieve the objectives during the tests are disqualified. So now, basically, out of 88 guys, we keep 39, which means a 50% failure rate. Most of them are on the front steps, normally, they're supposed to arrive by succeeding in the performance, here, they failed. It's a failure. Rest. Overall, there were 7 departures due to injuries and 42 eliminations due to insufficient performance. So the names I'll announce, you will go and gather on the side of the road. One by one, the failed ones come out of row. For those who remain, the instructor increases the pressure. It's just the beginning guys, the next three weeks, I can tell you, the slider was at 30 now it goes to 120, 180. So there, we did the minimum, at a minimum, some are already a bit limited, if there are 39 guys who are good, there are 39 who will come out. Okay. Attention all of you. Among the Green Berets, no quotas, only the best will remain. The master leaves to comfort those who failed. Okay, come on, a quick note because I like to talk too. For you it's over. Alright? So it's not the end of the world. There is a schedule, there are grades, we stick to it. Marine commandos have been like this for years and that's not going to change. That's why we're special forces and we have green berets on our heads. Okay guys. Yes Master Chief. It's normal to have a little slack. That's life, that's the way it is. Life is not a long quiet river as they say okay, come on watch out for yourself. And good luck and see you soon for some of you. For the 49 young mariners who leave the adventure, it's a disappointment. Number 15, which had been faltering from day one, is also at the end of his career. Some will go to heal their wounds. The others will return to their unit the following day. It was not my day. Many intend to try their luck again at the next selection. It's infuriating, I am young so at the moment I am fine, I am only 21 years old, up to 25 years old, I'll still be at my best. So I'm not giving up hope. Some, like Bourville and Pipo, passed with flying colors. At least for now. And there are others that are already on the wire. Like number 28, nicknamed Piano. For him, it was a close call. He is 20 years old, eliminated in the last selection for injury, he prepared for a year. You succeeded, okay? Yes, it's good. It's validated. I was hoping for that at least because the last year I had done a week. If I'd done anything less, I'd have been really disappointed. Have you already done this? Yes, last March. You would have been ready to do it again if you couldn't? It took a bit out of my spirits, but I would have done it again. Are you motivated to go all the way? Until the end now. A new chapter is now beginning for the survivors and nothing has been gained. What awaits them is three weeks of intensive training. Not everyone will make it to the end. Because the famous green beret that they dream of wearing is more than just a beret, more than the symbol of an elite unity. It's almost a legend. The legend was written at the end of the Second World War. In 1944, a handful of French soldiers who had joined the United Kingdom formed a combat unit determined to participate in the liberation of France. They are under the command of Commandant Philippe Kiefer. 
It is the very first Marine Command Unit of the French Army, then formed by the English Army in a secret location in Scotland. A merciless selection. In the end, there are about 400 of them to get the Green Beret. On the morning of June 6, 1944, Commando Kiefer made history. These men are the only French to land on the beaches of Normandy with the Allies. More than 70 years later, the Green Berets have remained one of the most selective units in the French Army. A new stage for candidates, three weeks of evaluation. There, we don't ask any questions. You grab the rope, throw yourself over the edge, you hold the rope, of course. And it starts right away via the jungle route. A chain of suspended rope bridges, beams, wall crossings. Lie down, don't get up. If you get up, you'll get down. You're wasting time. Objective, test the balance of candidates facing any type of obstacles they might encounter in the field. Okay, les autres. To overcome them, there are techniques. Okay, one, I'm crooking, pulling, I'm coming to block the armpit, swinging movement with my leg, I just crochet with my heel. The leg that is in the void serves as a pendulum, the arm is now hanging down. So what is going on? I can move, it won't fall. The master chief leads by example, all of these techniques have proven their worth, you have to learn them by heart. But that's easier to say than to do. Just because you're starting to feel good doesn't mean you should do anything. Now it's Resin Man's turn. And Resin Man, do you know why you fell over? You had both feet in the air. The technique. Hop there. Yes, guys, it's called the hanged pig. And this time, Resin Man doesn't have any tips to help. There you go, hop. Hey, don't go faster than the music. Calm down, oh, are you listening to me? No more energy. Yeah, I think he has no more energy. Okay, pick up. Pick up, the two here and there, the two ions of service there. The brain, there comes a time when you have to stop. Okay, that's attraction, I put. So you didn't have a problem with that. There is a way to overcome obstacles, there is a technique. The technique we show them is the best and the fastest, and there are some, once they are in the red, they arrive at the obstacle, they do anything. And immediately we see the guy who has more blood, who has more oxygen in the brain and makes a big nonsense. Traction every time. Put yourself a little bit forward. For those who overcome the fatigue and apply the instructor's technique, they goes. As for the 81, the master nicknames him Mr. Bean. At 23, it's definitely neither the biggest nor the strongest of the troop, but will surprise many. You've done it all, Mr. Bean. Okay, you stand here and unpack your musette. Did you find out you had muscles this afternoon or what? There you go, when you get hurt a bit. It works. We know that in this particular training course, as our instructor said, it's going to hurt. Of course we have to get over it. That's the aim of this training, to go beyond our limits. And there are obstacles that are even more feared than others. They require a steel body, an unstoppable technique. That's where the most people fail. Like the famous Britain Wall. Two meters high, a completely smooth surface without any grip. For the average person, it is simply impassable. When you're a Marine Commando, you have to do it in one jump. For piano, already in the hot seat, it is far from being a success. 
He fails three times and must finally pass his turn. The Breton Wall can very well be an obstacle that you find in a scene when you go on a mission where the city has been half raised. It may be necessary to cross a low wall to get into a house. All the obstacles that we find here on the trainings are obstacles that can be found naturally or not naturally in the field. There is also the spider. Not easy either. A giant net that can become a real bag of knots for number 31. That's fine. But for piano, it's the fall. A bad fall, head first. On arrival, despite these headaches, he will not say anything and prefers to lie. No head pain compared to your little fall earlier. Okay. Yes, you can drink, go on, I am not an executioner, well a little bit anyway, but good, hey stand up. That's it, even if you feel pain, you straighten your head. But I didn't want the infirmary because I was afraid I would be stopped there, and then after that, I started vomiting two to three times. My colleagues took me to the instructors, I went to the infirmary. I went to the hospital, they did, they took an x-ray, and then nothing serious, it was just a big shock. Piano can finally continue the selection. Beyond their physical performances, the instructors, throughout the selection, will also be intractable about the state of mind of the trainees. On the next test, some candidates will commit serious mistakes. During this journey, where do you think the mistake was made? Almost all of them are going to do it. Master Chief, you're not going to like it. Ah, uh, tell me everything. Out of 39, 38 students, only one went through the puddle. They've all done the rounds. The young recruits prefer to bypass the obstacle rather than get their feet wet. But there is much worse. Some people throw their PM on the bus as well. Two candidates threw down their submachine guns during the test. What number? 81. There is another one too. 81 is Mr. Bean. There is also the number 18 who will take for his rank. So let it be clear right away. The weapon you are being given is a weapon, not a toy. So you respect it, you respect us, and you respect yourself. So no one, from now on, throw away their gun. What is that? It's a PM. Where has your PM been? On the floor. It must be on me. It's the last time I'm telling you that got it, it's a weapon. It's not a toy, okay? Stop making fun of us. Stop acting like an idiot. Are you a big boy? How old are you? 18. So at 18, you stop doing stupid things. You put your gun on the ground. Do you realize what you're doing? At night, what's that going to do? You'll put the gun down, you'll walk away. You'll forget it, you will lose your weapon. What's your number? 18. Now I have your number and recorded it. Next time, I think you're in for a big one. Does it work? In the special forces, losing your weapon while on a mission, it is the insurance of losing your life. So, to make sure he learns his lesson, number 18 will have to finish the day with a piece of wood hanging on his leg as a reminder. All right, Mr. Bean, what's your count? And for Mr. Bean, it's 40 push-ups. Their comrades are not spared either after the puddle mistake. To go as quickly as possible go over there guys, so if you're already afraid of getting your feet wet, you're going to pass, but crawling this time. Let's go. Go on. And like that, there will be no more water afterwards. The weapon is what will save the lives of you and your colleagues. So you take care of your weapons. If it's not already integrated into your mind, you need to change your specialty. A fighter's purpose is to use his weapon, not his ballpoint pen. 
their weapon, during this training, they will have to learn to live with it. It is prohibited to part with it, under any circumstances. They sleep with it and, of course, pass all the tests with their rifles slung over their shoulders. Do you all understand? Yes, Master Chief. I didn't hear anything. Yes, Master Chief. No question of putting your gun down and even less to lose it during an exercise. And there is one who will understand the lesson well the next day. On this 10 meter rope stretched over the void, without a net. To reach the other edge of the tank. No choice but to crawl and move forward with the strength of their arms. Come on, don't stop. What are you doing here? The weapon, still slung over the shoulder, often makes the tests even more difficult. But stop moving like that. There you go. Come on, let's go, you're driving. Hurry up. The technique, there you go. And don't let your comrade down. And that's it. Number 59 finishes the course, but he lost his gun. It is a failure. Hurry up. Why did your gun fall? It was badly strapped. You put it around your neck, not under your arm. Yes, Master Chief. The penalty falls. 40 push-ups. Put your hands under the weapon, not the weapon in the ground. Yes, Master Chief. Come on, let's go again. That should be automatic. I shouldn't even tell you that. It's really the journey that shows the level of the guys. It's the hardest and that's why it's called the commando course. The commando course. One of the most challenging moments of the three month training where the best people start to stand out from the rest. The master has already spotted a few of them. Like the number 48, whom he even nicknamed his champion. This 25 year old young mariner introduces himself at the training for the first time. So far, he has succeeded in all the tests with flying colors. The hardest part here? There are not really any things that are really unrealizable. But maybe it's fatigue. The accumulation that only causes little sores become big bugs and we don't have time to deal with that. And the wounds on the commando course. Now you're bleeding a lot, come and see. It mostly becomes major injuries. Exhausted, it's not easy to crawl under barbed wire without scratching your face. At the finish line, it's a massacre. You grated your head on the barbed wire, come and see. I am a surgeon. I'll sew it up for you, we'll see if it's necessary a little point or not. You didn't miss out. Do you understand why you have to bow your head when there are barbed wire? Come on you are going to gather and you will go to the infirmary at the end. A clear cut of 10 centimeters there. Hold on, here it is. Don't move now, and the fingers there, what did you do with your fingers? Turn your hand over there. Were you a butcher before, right? Ah, uh, well, yeah, there, now, I think I'm going to have to go consult, because a while ago, when the body becomes like that, maybe it's time to make a decision. Come on, join your colleagues. Now it's more suffering than anything else. I think he's going to stop. He has more skin on his fingers, so there's a while, plus, he's going to get blood all over the place. Today's report, seven injured. And among them, there is a very unpleasant surprise for the Master Chief. They all have, oh, that's my champion now, what is he doing to me now? 
Oh my god, disaster. Well, come on, let's go see that, because they're going to see the doctor. Oh my champion what's the matter, he's limping. Hey my champion here, what do you have? What happened to you? Look, I actually had an injury to my right leg. This is the second time I am going to consult. The first time they wanted to stop me I said no I will continue. Despite two tendinitis on the leg and heel, the champion decided to continue. But will he last until the end? Especially since for him, as for the rest of the troops. No time to relax this evening. They leave for the whole night. Their mission to set up a camp in the middle of the forest and protect the site from enemy intervention. At first glance, a quieter test. And without an instructor on your back, the young recruits think they can finally be able to breathe a sigh of relief. The fact of going to the bivouac early, in broad daylight, it allows the guys to take care of their injuries, to rest. As soon as they have treated their injuries, they fall and fall asleep. The friends, they are all sleeping, they are resting. When we say to go to a bivouac, we are happy. When at 2 a.m., the instructors take them by surprise. They simulate an attack very close to the bivouac. Will the trainees have the right reactions? Not really. In the confusion, they huddled behind an unprotected wall. They are ideal targets for the enemy. You think you're good backed behind the wall? Are you really cornered behind the wall? This evening, Alex is evaluating them. Find me somewhere else, at the same place, but not behind the wall. Hurry up and find something better organized than that. Hurry up. He has 15 years of Marine Commando's experience behind him. If you ever have to use your gun, whom do you use it against? Against whom do you use it? Against your comrades who are in front? Change the location, change the location. Join your fucking buddy. The instructor is not gentle. These errors would have dramatic consequences in a real situation. Take a fighting attitude. Start thinking. We are starting to make ourselves useful to the group. Do you have a fighting attitude? No. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to eat you. Have a fighting attitude. You're a bit feverish. I think you're really feverish. Hurry up and pick up. Come on. The trainees have accumulated mistakes. The penalty will be imposed. Tell your comrade that you are afraid to be here. You are afraid to be here. I saw the fear in your eyes. Go back to your rows. Weapons up. Holding your gun in the air, the penalty could almost seem light. But after a commando day and a sleepless night, the rifle weighs a lot. And as soon as one gives up, Go back. He's plunged into the ice water tank. The others in position, hurry up. Exhausted. It continues. When we see that they make unacceptable mistakes for people who want to acquire the Green Beret, we punish them as we should. 
An individual mistake can put the group at risk. They must be aware that any fault can lead to serious consequences for success of the mission and for the group as a whole. There is just one button to turn off in your mind. For Risen Man, this is too much. The next morning, instructors are facing an extremely rare situation. It's Resin Man. Resin Man gives up. Rest. It's hard this morning. It was a humid night. However, he is not injured, his grades are fine, but it was his morale that failed. A defection that could demotivate the rest of the group. One of the senior commandos came in person. At your command, Lieutenant. Good morning, gentlemen. Your training boss came to see me this morning to tell me that one of you wanted to stop the training. Who is it? It's me, Lieutenant. Step out of the line. Get out of the rows and get well out of the way. It would not be a question of contaminating the rest of the crew. Three steps to the left, not too close. The officer wants to set an example. To you who are leaving, I want you to measure the magnitude of your decision. It's not just stopping the training. Today, you have just decided to join the losing side. All your life, you will give up just like you did today. To those who remain, I invite you, at every test, to raise your head, looking at the horizon. The horizon for you is June 6th in Aristrehem. It's the presentation of Green Berets. If you get there, the challenge is twofold. It is at the same time the quest for the Grail. The Green Berets, you will be showered with glory, but also, you will be an extraordinary man. And that, I guarantee you, if you manage to get that Green Berets, you'll be able to do anything later in life. You will never give up again. Because you will have a high morale. So be proud of what you do. Raise your head and nurture that crew spirit. Stand together. At the orders of the training boss. Rest. Here we go action. Come on, let's go. It's a speech that's sure to dissuade others from giving up. The troops are remotivated. I have had moments of doubt. When we see the friends leave, when we feel like everything's working against us, when we get up four times during the night and have to go to the toilet four times because we've forgotten something, that we have to sleep soaked so we don't sleep all night, and we say to ourselves that it is hell, but once it passes, it passes. Morale is affected at the moment, but the decision, that why we're here, takes over and it comes back. There are only 38 candidates left, soon to be 37. This time, we fail to face the worst of the elements. The exercise is carried out in the open sea, a situation similar to that which young recruits could meet on a mission in the field. Failure is unacceptable. A nice dive and then we swim in a line. On your marks, ready, go. The Zodiac has just turned around, you are 100 meters from the coast, you have to reach the coast. It is 100 meters to reach the pontoon. I feel that there is one that is not being very aquatic on the left. Hey, don't touch him, he can swim, he manages on his own. And if he's not at ease, there's no need to hold him, because he won't be able to swim. Lie down, come on, lie down. Lie down. Hey, the rest of you, shut up. In a sea of 11 degrees and a raincoat full of water, number 74 was losing his nerve. He's drowning. Off to the pontoon, come on, everyone move forward. Totally panicked, 
he even forgot to pull on his life jacket. A mistake that would be fatal on a mission. There, we suffer. There, this is the subitator's cry that he's dead. Come on. Get to the platform. Subitator, come over here. Stop suffering now, okay, maybe you're not aquatic, maybe you weren't made for that, that's how it is, that's life. But at least we raise our heads and we do not let ourselves die like a fallen fruit, even if you're HS, you can't take it anymore, you have to find a way out and what's the solution now? It's pulling on your... There you go, and you, no, you let yourself go, okay, imagine you're on a mission, you fall into the water, if there is no one next to you you go to the depths. Great. He was leaving at the bottom, so keep an eye on him, it's dangerous for him, because he doesn't even have the sense to pull the trigger on his security system. He has the will, but it's his physique that does not follow, so, it's a failure, failure for the 100 meters. It's an omen. Not a good one for him. The number 74 will be eliminated the next day. The remaining candidates have so far held their own facing the toughest physical tests. Now, it's their mental toughness that will be put to the test. Facing the most extreme situations they will encounter, while on a mission, in particular, the cold. Number three, how is the water? It's good, it's still too hot. How is the water? Still too hot. You have to be convinced of it. Swimming in icy water is tough, but the worst thing is waiting soaked until the whole group has gone through. The outside temperature is about 10 degrees. Water is an environment that needs to be tamed. When you are in the water, even if it is cold, you know how to stay calm. You control your movements, you move efficiently and freely, you control your breathing, but never panic. You've been careful you almost drowned at the finish. So we stay focused. Water is an environment that will teach you how to become Zen and we don't panic. The float is the Marine Commando. <laughs> Bourville knows that these kind of ordeals could tip him over the edge. The cold is his main weakness. At the top of the tank every time you have to jump. We're not going to hide, the motivation is sometimes hard to come by. And suddenly, the group effect says, well, come on, it's my turn, then in the end, it's fine, and I managed to take it on myself. He will finally last throughout the test. Nearly an hour without breaking down. You know how penguins do it in the Great Arctic? To keep warm, they're doing the same as you, on the other hand, it works. Those who are in front move to the middle, and so on. Animals are not stupid. And when it's cold, you have to breathe slowly. And when you shiver, that's normal. That is a good sign, as soon as you stop shivering, you are in hypothermia, and then it's the start of the crap. No further questions. No master chief. How was the water? It was good. No, it's not like that, it's always too hot. How was the water? Still too hot. Good, it has to fit. And to make sure it all gets into the candidates' minds, the same evening, they do it all over again. 
Immersed in the tank and waiting in the cold until nightfall. The temperature dropped to five to six degrees. The next day, the candidates think they will have to do a much easier test. The abseiling down. This is an exercise they have already done during the training. Except that this time, there will be an additional difficulty. Think. Hey, where is this strand going? It goes by there. That's what you need to get back, right? If you go around the ring, it won't work. They have to tie the knots themselves to ensure their safety on the way down. And that is far from being a detail. In commando training, it's even a matter of life and death. The guy, if he has to take his colleague down on a half capstan, he is responsible for the safety of his colleague. In other words, he has his life in his hands. What if he ties a crappy knot and let his colleague unscrew, falls, and his knot, instead of making a half cap, he has made a dead turn, he can always try to hold the abseil in his hand. He'll burn his hand normally. On the other hand, the colleague below will go down faster than expected so there you go, that's unacceptable. For Piano, who is already in difficulties, things are not getting better. And even for the best, the situation is complicated, like Pipo, who seems lost. So, he will to have to fit, otherwise, he can forget about the green beret. Think about it. You've got a big mistake on your setup. We review everything in detail. What's wrong with it? It's just because I don't. How did you equip yourself? This is an even more blatant mistake. Guys, you're starting to lose your water tightness. You'll be awake. Then you'll come back and put your knot on the little loop of eight. You go and freshen up, then come back with the right knot in the right place. And this candidate will now understand the critical importance of this exercise. You're having a bit of trouble with your fingers, merguez instead of fingers. We'll get there, we'll get there, so your right hand is there, it will be at hip level and your left hand will be on the knot. And you'll see that you can go down right, even if you're left-handed, oh dear you've just taken a round in the left arm. His knot is missed. He's getting ready to go down. The master chief barely caught up with him. He nearly fell from a height of 15 meters. Don't let go of that right hand. Don't raise it up there. No, but you're doing it, you moron. Releasing the right hand means releasing the safety carabiner, the carabiner that will secure the descent. When I go down a 25 or 30 meter wall in shorts, sneakers, that works. On the other hand, when I'm going down a 30 meter wall with a 30 kilo bag, a 15 to 20 kilo lashing rope, plus my weapon, etc., it's a real challenge. It's already not the same anymore. End of the exercise. Short break and surprise inspection of the bags. I'm at the co-training course, there is no dark chocolate. That, dried fruits, fruit paste, almond paste. If not, afterwards you can have some pepitos too. 
Perishable products are prohibited, especially chocolate. Everyone's going to be affected, even the champion. Put on your poncho, your heavy voil and unpack your whole bag on it. Come on hurry up now, and your gun, put it on correctly, it's not a handbag okay, you're not going to do groceries. He is human like everyone else, it's a genre he gives himself, but basically he wants us to get away with it above that we show the best of ourselves. And then, as he says, he will make his selection. But he doesn't really have time and he's not a social worker, and he's not here to be social. Candidates are penalized for failing to comply with the rules. Those who talk they pump, the rest of you gather around over here. Come on Shattuck, let's go. How wise they were, they had a good week, thanks to their colleagues, they will be entitled to a little square of chocolate. Because I am nice. That's it, can you thank the number? Chocolate, 68 master. So who do we thank? Thank you 68, and we wipe the smile off his face. Come on. I hope you're not allergic to chocolate. It is good, it's the small reward of the week. It won't be like that all the time. End of the second week, the consequences are severe, another 15 dropouts due to injury. The summary of the week, a few people left, anyway, were only 24 left out of. 39. In one week that's not bad at all, there you go, so after. I think there are still some who are going to leave. The Master Chief doesn't think so well. And the bad news is going to come sooner than expected. Come on, hurry up. We are still waiting for you. The third week has just begun. Already a new surrender and a major one. Besides, he is one of the favorites of the Master Chief, his champion. What's happening? But if you are going to consult, it's just that, a while ago, unfortunately it's going to be over for you. I know I won't be able to do it. I can't run anymore. His two tendinitis make him suffer too much. Okay, give me your gun, you're going to the doctor. We're not going to talk for three weeks. Now you know the consequences. I think my champion is over, because that's the second time he's consulted us, he wanted to continue, but he realized that his body didn't want to. So yeah, once again, I lost one of my champions. The champion has reached the end of his capacity, but he has no regrets. You have to be a little bit crazy to get into things like that, but no, it's really a great experience. Of course, you're a bit disappointed, but... I am disappointed because it is an injury, but the morale is not affected, and I know that in September I will be back. I'll come back with determination, and that's it, it will pass this time I would have taken precautions beforehand. This departure is only the beginning of a long series. Three more withdrawals will follow this week. It is far from one and above all, it is far from over. For those who would think that after three weeks, it's party time. Okay. So, now, we pick up. Two grappling hooks, and head for the grappling pit. And your fate this weekend is going to be decided then. Go on. There are only 20 left, and the weakest will make matters worse in the eyes of the instructors. During this new exercise, the grapple throw. And yet, at first glance, it is far from being the most difficult, but when you don't have the knack, like Mr. Bean, you can try endlessly. Fourth attempt. I have a feeling you're going to force feed me, I don't know why. Same for piano. 
Half of the candidates fail. Put your left hand down, hey, back off, you're starting to force feed me now. You, your fate is done now. You didn't understand how to let go of your hand, if you're holding the carabiner. If you hold the carabiner, do you think the thing is going to go up? There it is, the void, flat encephalogram, now there's more sound more image. I think tonight I know what I'm going to make you do, that is clear. With the grappling hook, you have to be convinced to succeed on the first try, there are some, they're on the way. You know you only have to look at them, am I going to succeed or not, no, it's I'm going to succeed. Okay, do the technique, and it's not the movement like that, okay? Do not spin the salad. So we're on the side, we're watching, I'm do this, and blam. Now, I'm swinging. On the next attempt, the master has planned for a penalty in case of failure. Only one chance to throw the grapple, to pass it on the first try, the one who is misses. Means a guy. Who won't be on leave this weekend. We are worse than Colanta. Whoever misses will nominate one of his colleagues who will not be a permittee. That's it, it's the game. That way it will motivate you to succeed the first time, let's go in a short strike come on. A penalty that may seem unfair, but which will strengthen the cohesion of the group. For four hours, the strongest candidates help the weakest to perfect their gestures. For Mr. Bean and Piano, the help of their comrades won't be lacking. For me, I had difficulty getting through the grappling hook on the jump course. I saw each guy in turn who came to see me. They absolutely wanted me to succeed. In fact, they all showed me the technique. The technique is always the same, but it was nice to see every guy who was desperate for me to succeed so that I could stay with them. So, finally, who will be deprived of the weekend? Attention, 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 Mr. Bean. So, Mr. Bean, now you have a huge responsibility on your shoulders. I knew he'd get over it, I could see it in his eyes. There Mr. Bean the eye of the tiger, it wasn't the cat's eye there. Ah. Okay. You stand over there. Next. Second who will not be permissive. Now, we insist on it because we want guys to succeed. If we didn't want to, you don't understand anything. You suck and you leave. That is not the point. The aim is to train the guys and get them up and running. On the courses, you have to teach them the right technique and that they succeed. That is the principle. Come on Mr. Bean, lie down, it looks like an 80-year-old old man. This is really the last week of evaluation. So they're out of luck, for some, it's the last chance, let's say. The verdict of the test, two trainees failed at the grappling hook. The two that missed. Step out of line. So, who have you appointed who won't be a licensee? Designate yourself. Yes, master. And you? Same. Okay, so the others will give you permission. Okay. <laughs> but the group spirit will prevail. Eventually, they all decided to go without a weekend in solidarity. They informed the master about it. Ah, well, I'm glad to hear that, it's starting to come now, good spirits guys. It is good, so no licensee, it is good, you make me happy, come on you're working now. Team spirit is very important, because when you are tired, there is our comrade who will give us a hand. 
He's going to help us if we're a bit slower than him, and we will return the favor when it is his turn. You can't do a training alone, it doesn't work like that. There will be lots of trials. We will have to support each other to move forward. You don't fight wars alone anyway. Before the end of this third week, the instructors have planned one more test. After a week of intense effort, it will turn into a real crossroads for the candidates. Everything we make them do accumulates, whether in terms of tiredness or physical or mental effort. We'll see if the guy is still able to analyze, to have a clear enough mind to do the mission. Will young recruits have clear mind after this last test? A 30 kilometer race with a 12 kilo bag and always with the gun around the neck. The gaps quickly widen. Mr. Bean is lagging behind. Take a fruit paste, it's much easier. And water, come on, we're not wasting time like that. Speed up a bit now. Halfway through the course, Bourville is in slow motion. Piano is in pain, but doesn't give up. The first ones arrive. Come on, stand up, go to the back. You're going to hydrate yourself and put your bag down. Put your bag down, put some warm things on. I have never made an effort like that. Never. Number. 31, adjutant. I am dead. Everyone can walk. After that, but people have to be able to walk and fight behind it. So precisely, we put them in situations of extreme fatigue. 30 kilometers with a bag is like doing a half marathon. So we ask a lot of people, precisely because we want to be sure that the day when you have to carry 30 kilos on your back, run 15 kilometers and an action behind, let the guy be able to do the action, even if he is tired. Come with me, we're going to stretch our legs out okay. To bring down lactic acid, it's normal. You ran well so we'll do that. You'll feel less cramped. It was the worst effort of my life. I was not well. I was not well, my tendon hurt like hell. Yeah. <laughs> The tendon was too much. I've had inflammation since walking at night. It's been three weeks. I have never experienced so much walking. Mr. Bean has come to the end, but in agony, on the verge of vomiting, he is comforted by Piano, who gave everything to make up for his poor performances. He finishes fifth. Over the last 10 kilometers, it was really just mental. I didn't feel anything. I couldn't feel my legs anymore. I told myself that I had to move forward. It was hard, but hey, it's over. That's really a big minus point. Come on guys, we're not wasting time. In seven minutes, we're getting in the truck. 
The day has only just begun. The day is not over, but only some. Piano and Mr. Bean, in particular, have yet to undergo a final test. A catch-up test. Just under a dozen are in the hot seat. Their performance are below standard. This course is their last chance to continue the training. Piano begins. A single failure on an obstacle and that's the end. This time, on the Breton wall, it is flawless. Now, the rope test, where Piano had not been in time. This time, it passes. I gave it my all. It's a pleasure to complete a journey without failure. And when you know you've given it your all, it's nice because the grade will follow, I think. For Mr. Bean, so far, it's also flawless. Mr. Bean, all the way over there, we do everything we can. But before jumping into the tank, he pauses for a moment. That means everything. You put this on a plane, it doesn't make it through the door. Hey, come here. Why are you hesitating to jump now? What are you afraid of now? Hey, a commando is never afraid. It's fear that scares the commando. So when we arrive, we just jump. If I put your ass off on a plane, right outside the door, will you jump? No, you won't jump. If you're already scared of doing so, you will be scared of jumping from the plane, don't you think so? So if you're already scared of jumping from there to get on the asparagus, I think you're going to be 400 meters above the ground in a plane and you'll have to jump. Do you think you're going to make it? Come on, go. This was his only mistake on the course. Will it cost him his place for the rest of the training? We'll get back to you the next day. This is the end of the second major stage of the course, the announcement of the results after three weeks of evaluation. Waxed Rangers, flawless outfit, clean shaven and dressed up as it should be. The 20 interns await the verdict outside the instructor's office. The master and his deputies take a look at the situation and eliminate the weakest. So we validate. Out of the four, that's 16 guys. A small group, but a good one. Now we're going to announce. The good news, it's less fun. Sixteen retained and four eliminated. All in all, watch out. Complete. Complete Master Chief. Attention. Gentlemen, congratulations on these three weeks. More tests are to come. Be sure to make an appointment so that on June 6th, you can honor your alumni who arrived on that date by earning a green beret. The Master Chief will now announce the number of those eliminated. The 53, 5, 14 and 81. 81 is Mr. Bean. For piano, it's a sigh of relief. I was stressed right up until the end. As a result, I'm a bit happier compared to the others who knew they were going to pass. I had the suspense all the way. They told us for we're going to leave when they started giving the names. I was on tiptoe, ready to go. You have to hang on now because nothing is over. 
So now you are a group of 16. Good rugby team now, normally that should do it, that's good, congratulations, as the boss said. But it's not over, is it all right? Yes master. All right, motivation, there, okay, overall, watch out, rest. I'm off to cheer up your little friends. A weight that is removed, now that the tests are over, it's already a weight off our shoulders, now all that's left to do is soak it in. But it's hard. When you've worked hard to make a group, to see them leaving. From now on, it's a bit tough. The smaller the group, the more difficult it is to see someone leave. The master chief comforting losers as best he can. Immediately, Mr. Bean raised his hand. You all have the abilities. So Mr. Bean, you have to eat lion and go a little gazelle. And you will see it will get better, come on. Good luck. Thank you, Master. Isn't it a failure? No. It taught me things. I did three weeks that taught me a lot of things. I know what I need to review and do to come back and spend these three weeks and integrate the commando course. It's hard for losers to see their comrades prepare for what's next. We're pretty sure there's nothing to worry about for you. You just need to mature a little and work hard. Mr. Bean, this will stay with you for the rest of your life. For those who stay, two more months of training are required before they can earn their famous beret. Two months of intensive training. They're finally going to really learn how to become elite soldiers, special forces. On Earth. In the air. But above all, Marine Commandos obliges in the water. They learn to beat you. That is, to intervene quickly and discreetly in a zodiac on a beach. An assault method that they must master perfectly. And for which, they'll be practicing for hours. Day and night. Except for serious misconduct, they are almost guaranteed to get the Green Beret. But after this training, only the best will be called upon in the future to go on a mission to the end of the world and the most dangerous places on Earth. But before that, there is still a final step. A kind of ritual of passage that all trainees fear because no one knows exactly what it involves. In the jargon of the elite forces, this is called wise rooster. It has the reputation for being particularly trying, and it could fall on them at any time. Today, exercise in pairs in the forest. On the program, an obstacle course. At first glance, nothing out of the ordinary. The group suspects nothing. As usual, the master keeps a close eye on things. At the end of the course, the mission is to attack a fortress where an invisible enemy is hiding. Suddenly, the young trainees are confronted with a totally unexpected attack. In a few seconds, without any hesitation, they are locked up and handcuffed.
In pairs, they were taken away by force. They understood it well. The dreaded moment of coxage has just begun. They're all going to die. Like all his comrades. This candidate suspects nothing. To preserve the secrecy of the coxage, we won't be able to film what's going on. All we know is that it involves confinement, intense interrogation, and psychological pressure. The rocket was able to say a few words to us. We're under the balaclava. There are guys behind us who come to get us. We don't know what to do. And under these conditions, I believe that the body voluntarily avoids being conscious in a moment of survival. Because if you're aware, then you're scared all the time. So we're here, thinking about a lot of things. We think of the beach. We think of vacations. It's just a contradictory and nothing to do with it. We think about family. We think about everything that is good for us, but nothing to do with the moment. I won't go into more detail about the test itself, but it's shocking. It's really shocking. We discover each other. Personally, it really challenged me. Maybe I thought I was more strong, in a lack of humility, but in fact, I realized that there is no champion. After several hours, still hooded, they are released in pairs and taken to the Master Chief. Shocked and trembling, their handcuffs are removed. The end of the ordeal is near. Still in the dark, disoriented, they have to find their way out of a labyrinth of narrow tunnels. They have one hour. They got a taste of what it was like to be a captive. It's light. But from the little they've already been through, we feel that they are well achieved. It shows them that they should definitely not get caught but we can see that they are affected, physically and perhaps some a bit morally. At the other end of the labyrinth, it's back to freedom. The ordeal is over. None of them broke down. It's the big day, the Green Beret Award Ceremony. It takes place every June 6th on Wistrium Square, right there, where in 1944, Commander Kiefer's first Marine Commandos landed with the British. The bagpipes are there to remind us that the first Marine Commandos were trained by the British. The highest dignitaries of the French Navy are present, the elders are there too, and among them, a legend. Lyon Gautier, one of the first Green Berets who landed in Normandy on June 6, 1944. But what everyone is waiting for are the new guys. Dropped by helicopter, 
the 16, who were still in the race, are all here. To the sound of bagpipes, they appear before the general staff to receive the long-awaited Green Beret. Lion Gautier presented the first prize to the class major. It's a solemn moment. You can see the emotion on everyone's faces. Especially for this trainee who receives the Green Beret from his father, himself a former Marine commando. It is the consecration after three months of effort. They will now parade through the streets of Wistria. Les petits commandos marines, le jeune embryon, Fucking babies were already gone. Now you have to be proud. You raise your head. You've got to put your chest out. That's it, guys. That's done. Enjoy the moment. It happens once in a lifetime. Are you proud of them? Yes, above all, they should be proud of themselves. An hour to enjoy this moment under the applause of the crowd. This is their first time working alongside the French Special Forces. They pose for remembrance in front of the commemorative steel of the landings of 1944. Their families are there. Today, they are the heroes. Let's gather there and move on. Don't waste time, there are people waiting for you. We'll keep it short. Congratulations to everyone, okay? And enjoy yourself throughout your career. That's all I have to say. I guess I wasn't bad enough with you. We weren't bad enough, in fact. There you go, come on, be proud of what you have accomplished, come on, let's go. Good luck. For the first time, all of the instructors shook hands with them. Stop cycling you, you're already finished, well, Mimi, under whom, gently with me. All right, go to Froy Lou Hardy, we'll see each other again, Bourville, go well. Come on, congratulations guys, enjoy, you are thinking of doing something for your hair. Now, they are part of the Marine Commando family.